Hello and welcome to The Bike Show once again. Lots of new stuff on the programme this week because we have news of two very important bike launches and we've had some eye-opening new electric bike speed records set by a very famous ex-bike racer. Later on, I'll be talking with Don about six adventure bikes that he rode recently, none of which has a 21-inch front wheel. Is that sacrilege or sensible? We'll find out after the break. But first, time for some news after I explain that I'm wrapped up like this because it's horribly cold where I am currently trapped in France and I am extremely jealous of you all in South Africa where it seems to be hotter even than it usually is at this time of year. Oh well, to keep me warm and looking forward to the lockdown in France and much of the rest of Europe being lifted and letting me ride bikes once again, let's take a look at a couple of the great new models headed our way for 2021. I'm going to start with a bike that we featured on the show just a few weeks back. Don and I were talking about the first production bike to feature adaptive cruise control and blind spot detection thanks to a new radar system for bikes developed by Bosch. Ducati's V4 Multistrada is the bike in question and this was an early reveal of some of the technology the bike would feature. I think it's fair to say though that hot on the Multi's heels are bound to be models from other manufacturers who will also be using the same Bosch system. More importantly, the whole finished Multistrada has been revealed in all its glory now. And that's brilliant news, especially for those of us who like the idea of having one ultimate bike in the garage that can do everything from taking you to work and back reliably and safely to touring with a passenger comfortably and then behaving like a superbike when you feel the need. Maybe even tackling the occasional dirt road without crashing into a tree or falling apart on some washboard gravel highway. The new Multistrada has the V4 engine that has made so many headlines for Ducati over the past couple of years, but not as we know it. Gone for the first time on a modern production Ducati is the Desmodromic valve system to be replaced with good old valve springs. Displacement has been increased to 1158 cc's and the result is an engine that only needs the valve play checked at 60,000 km intervals. It obviously revs a bit lower too, topping out at only 12,000 rpm while generating a measly 168 horsepower. It looks like a natural progression of the traditional Multistrada shape with a few extra slashes and vents which are presumably for cooling. There's an aluminium monocoque frame, steel tubes for the subframe and alley once again for the swing arm which is not a single sided jobby this time. Wheels are 17 inch at the rear and 19 at the front. As is the way with Ducati, there's a standard version and then the more expensive S model, which is signified by higher quality Skyhook semi-active suspension, upgraded brakes with 330mm discs instead of 320 at the front, and they also feature Brembo's top-level Stylema calipers. You also get that adaptive cruise control, an auto blipper quick shifter, and a snazzier 6.5 inch full colour TFT screen as opposed to the 5 inch version on the base model. This could be more important than it sounds, given how much can be controlled through the multimedia system, including turn by turn navigation. It looks like an epic all in one bike, and no word on pricing as yet, other than the obvious, which is that it will be expensive. So to bring the price down to something that more of us average Joes could actually afford, let's move on to Triumph's latest offering, the Trident. This new model will represent the most affordable way for you to get into the triple cylinder world of Triumph, but don't let that trick you into thinking this is just some hastily thrown together cheapo that isn't worth a good look. Let's remember that, unlike in South Africa, this middleweight naked class of bikes represents huge business for the manufacturers in the rest of the world's markets, but especially in Europe. Lots of units get sold and the competition is extremely fierce. Breaking into this class in any meaningful way means that Triumph has got to offer something that puts it at or very near the top of this list of contenders and all while remaining really competitive on price. Judging by what the Brit manufacturer is offering here, you'd have to say it stands a good chance of capturing a meaningful slice of this very lucrative sales pie. Pricing in Europe suggests it will be about as expensive as the Honda, but around 
10 to 12 grand more costly than the Yamaha or Kawasaki. That means probably somewhere around the 140-ish thousand rand mark. But while it is undoubtedly at the more expensive end of the class, it also undoubtedly offers more than you currently get from the other manufacturers. It will produce 80 horsepower from its inline 660cc triple and feature two riding modes, road and rain, that will affect fuel mapping and traction control. There's an assisted slipper clutch and, if you delve into the options list, a quick shifter. The frame is an all-new tubular steel affair, the swing arm is double-sided aluminium and there's an upside-down shower fork at the front end, which is unusual for this class. Nissan calipers for the brakes, unadjustable ABS are standard, although the traction control will be adjustable or possibly even turned off altogether. There's a full-colour TFT screen, which Triumph is absolutely fantastic at, by the way, and LED lighting throughout, so it should look a little bit sharper than its competition as well. We'll be bringing you tests of both these models as soon as we can, but now let's turn our attention to speed. Electric speed, to be precise, because Max Biaggi has been playing around at a French airfield with the Voxen Wattman. Voxen is a French motorcycle manufacturer that hit the skids with its V-twins just over a decade ago. The new owner of Voxen is another French independent manufacturer, this time of cars, and is called Venturi. Some of you may remember the sports cars they made in their 1980s and 90s. Venturi itself was revived by a monoguesque called Gildo Pastor, who has very proudly claimed both companies for Monaco. He has concentrated Venturi's efforts in the realm of electric vehicles and currently runs a Formula E team with Felipe Massa as a driver. He's applied the same sort of focus to the Voxen project and is setting out to ultimately set a 400 km an hour speed record on the salt flats of Bolivia with an electric bike. But in the meantime, he's racked up some records during the bike's ongoing development. Of the 12 records he established on the day, the most impressive was for the electric semi-streamline class over the flying mile, with the average speed in both directions being 366.94 km an hour. Interestingly, the bike actually peaked out briefly at 408 k's an hour, or in old money, 254 miles an hour. Now the track itself was very short at just over two miles, so with more room they are anticipating breaking the 400 km an hour barrier for the flying mile, pretty easily you'd imagine, which is run in both directions within two hours and is averaged out to get the final speed. Impressive indeed from the Frenchies, and the streamliner looks great, though I have to say it looks even better when they take a bit of the fairing off to do the semi-fared top speed runs. Congratulations then to Voxen and Max Biaggi, but from top speeds on tar, we go to Donovan speeds in the dirt after this short break. 